Hey everyone, my name is Grace Wells and welcome to Adobe's YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how I created this stylized explosion effect in my latest random TikTok commercial for a rock. And this can all be done in Adobe Premiere Pro, so no After Effects required for this effect. So this effect is gonna come in handy when you wanna make it appear as if an object is exploding, but you don't wanna get involved with 3D modeling or 3D layers, you just wanna keep it simple. So I'm in Adobe Premiere Pro right now, and the first thing I've done is I've created a new sequence to work in, just because we're gonna be working with a lot of individual layers today, so I definitely want a clean sequence for this effect. So we're gonna start with this static clip of a rock. Now, one thing you should keep in mind when you're filming your clips is you're gonna to have to isolate the object that you want to do this explosion effect on. So you're gonna need two clips. You're gonna need one of the object itself, and I would recommend shooting that on a green or a blue screen. That way you can color key out the background and isolate that object. And then you're also gonna need a separate clip of a clean backdrop without your object that you can then layer underneath. Here I did shoot my rock on a white surface, so I ended up using a combination of color key and opacity masks to isolate my object. And then for my background, I'm gonna be using this stock clip of lightning, kind of as the catalyst for my explosion. So the lightning is gonna hit the rock and then the rock is gonna explode. But obviously you don't need to have something that causes your object to explode. It could just explode spontaneously if that's what you want. Your background could be literally anything. Once you've isolated your object, you can get started. If you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to use the color key effect, don't worry. I actually do run through it in my other Adobe tutorial on the background dissolving transition. So go check that one out if you need to know how to get rid of your green screen, and then we can start from there. So now that I've used color key to isolate my object, you can see it's on black. We've not got any background. I've actually scaled it down a little bit so that you can really see the explosion. I wanna create like a big explosion. I wanna see all the pieces flying. So I've scaled down the rock a little bit, and I'm not gonna bring in my backdrop just yet, just because I do find it easier to work on the black. It's just easier to see what's going on, but I am going to leave an empty layer on the bottom so I can drag that in later. So depending on what object you're using for this effect, you're gonna to wanna to think about how many pieces it might naturally break into. And then you're gonna to wanna to duplicate this layer that you already have, your original base layer, into as many pieces as you think you might need. Don't worry, this is just an estimate for now. You can always add in some track pieces later, um, but just think about ballpark. How many pieces do you think you're gonna to need to create this explosion? I'm actually just gonna quickly go into the color panel and add a tint to this layer. Um, the only reason being that this is gonna help me later to distinguish what parts of the rock that I've already worked on and edited and what parts I haven't. You'll see what I mean in a second. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. So I'm just gonna change my tint to 50 to give it this kind of pinkish hue, but you can do anything you want. You can change the temperature, the exposure. It doesn't really matter. Just make it look visibly different. So for this effect, I think I want my rock to break into a lot of tiny little pieces. So I'm actually gonna duplicate my layer 30 times because I think I'm gonna need around 30 individual pieces to really get the visual effect that I want, this kind of shattering effect. All right, so now I've got all my duplicated layers in there, and now is where I'm gonna start going in and drawing out individual pieces that I want this rock to break into. Um, so I'm just gonna zoom in here. So I've selected the top layer, I'm gonna work from the top down, and the way that I'm gonna break my rock into individual pieces is going to be with an opacity mask for each layer. So go into your effect controls, you're gonna see a little drop down menu with the word opacity there. Hit the pen tool. And then you can just freehand draw a little piece that you're gonna want your rock to break into. So that's my first piece, and this is the point where I can delete my Lumetri color effect, because once I do that, it's gonna get rid of the tin, and I'm gonna be able to see what portion of the rock I've already worked on and which portion of the rock I still have to break up into more pieces. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind when you're drawing these pieces for your object to break up into is what material is your object made out of and how would it naturally explode? What shaped pieces would it make if it were to explode? Because because this is a rock, I want all of my pieces to be pretty jagged, pretty crisp, um, pretty geometric, just because I know that if a rock were to shatter, it would create a lot of really sharp pieces. So for that reason, I'm actually going to turn my mask feather all the way down to zero because I want these really sharp, crispy edges. But you might not wanna do that depending on what your object is. You might wanna even consider bumping that feather up to create softer edges because it might create a bit more of a motion blurring effect. But for me, in this case, I really wanna keep it super crisp, um, super jagged, so I'm gonna turn that mask feather all the way down to zero. All right, so now that I have this first piece, I'm going to go copy my opacity mask. I'm gonna go down to my next layer. I'm going to paste the mask. So you can see the mask shows up there. This is gonna help me have a little bit of a guide to create my next piece. So you wanna pick maybe one side of your original piece to work from. So I'm gonna keep this line on the right-hand side as a guide for my next piece. And then I'm simply just going to move some of the pinpoints from my original shape to create my new shape. So that's gonna give us piece number two. 
And then again, I'm gonna go and delete that Lumetri color effect so that I can see which parts of my rock I've already worked on. So now I've got those two pieces. And you're just gonna run through this whole process again and again, you're gonna copy your mask, paste it onto the next layer down, create your new piece, delete your Lumetri color, keep going and going and going. To speed this process up for you for the purposes of this video, I'm actually just gonna switch into another sequence where I've already broken my rock up into all the individual pieces. And I ended up only using 26 of my layers, so I just deleted the other four. So now that our object is broken up into pieces, we've arrived at the final step, which is going to be animating those pieces to explode outwards. So go back to your top layer again and go into effect controls. You're gonna create three keyframes in the motion section of your effect control. So it's gonna be a position keyframe, a scale keyframe, and a rotation keyframe right at the beginning of the clip. It's probably pretty obvious why you need the position keyframes is because you're gonna be moving these pieces outward. Um, but the reason that I recommend the rotation and the scale keyframes is it just adds a little bit of dimension and a little bit of a 3D effect to these pieces to have them kind of spinning, maybe getting bigger and smaller as if they're coming towards or further away from the camera. Um, you don't necessarily need to do all these keyframes for every single piece. I probably would recommend doing position and rotation keyframes for every single piece, but for scale keyframes, maybe like 25% of the pieces, you just make them look like they're either moving towards or going further away from the camera just to add that dimension. So now that we've got these three keyframes at the beginning of our sequence, just go to the end of the sequence and add three more keyframes. And this is where you're gonna start moving the piece of the object into its end position, its final position. I would recommend working from the bottom to the top, adjusting the rotation keyframe, then the scale keyframe, then the position keyframe. Frame. So it doesn't really matter what you set as the rotation keyframe. Um, just, you know, play around with it, move it around. You can either go positive rotation or negative rotation, a big rotation, a small rotation. I think the most important thing is just to make these all a little bit different. Um, so try to switch it up for every single one. The best way to do that is just gonna be to move it to a random number. Next, change your scale keyframe. I'm gonna set this to 150 just to make this appear a little bit larger towards the end of my sequence. And then finally, I'm going to change my position keyframe, keeping in mind that this piece comes from the top left of my rock. So I'm probably gonna want it to land in the top left of my frame because as these pieces are exploding outward, you want them to kind of maintain the trajectory that they would in real life. You don't want your pieces kind of flying randomly. Um, so I'm gonna put this piece in the top left corner of my frame. All right, so now we're gonna repeat this process for our next piece. So go down to the next layer, create your three keyframes at the front of the sequence, then go to the end of the sequence and create three more keyframes. Start from rotation. I'm gonna do a negative rotation this time just to switch it up. I'm probably not gonna change the scale for this one just because I don't think you should change the scale for every single one. Um, just pick a select few, like I said, maybe 25%. Um, and then again, this is kind of in the top left corner, so I'm gonna move the position keyframes to the top left. For this piece, I'm actually gonna have it end outside of my frame. That's gonna make it move faster than the last piece that we did um, because it, it ends in a farther away location. Again, this is another variable that you should keep in mind. Having all your pieces move at different speeds is gonna just make it look even more lifelike. Um, so I would recommend having most of your pieces end outside of the frame. Maybe just have a couple that are moving a little bit slower. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do here. So again, you're just gonna work through each one of your layers, adjusting the rotation, the scale, and the position keyframes, and you're gonna end up with this really cool explosion effect. Once you do that, the last thing that's left is gonna be to drag in your backdrop layer to finish off your effect. And there you have it. We have our lightning strike and our rock exploding. Again, you know, it's pretty stylized. It's not 3D, but for something that you can achieve in Adobe Premiere Pro without any use of After Effects, this is pretty freaking cool. These are like my favorite things ever, these Premiere Pro VFX hacks, because they allow you to create a stunning visual impact that really brings your videos to the next level and allows them to stand out. But because you don't have to use any additional programs or mess around with 3D, you can achieve that impact in a fraction of the time. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can see more videos like this from Adobe. And if you wanna find me on social media, my handle is at Grace Wells Photo on TikTok and Instagram, and I'm Grace Wells here on YouTube. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.